Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Is, is that you're going to be your new intro right there? I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to jiggle my whiskey that I've ruined with ice. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So so we're both drinking the same thing tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Wild Turkey 101. The the and, standard man. That's yeah, the that's, that's the one right there. You just can't go wrong at that distillery. Everything they make is good, except for the one that they water down to eighty one. <laughs> the eighty one, yeah. which is the only one you can usually find in bars and restaurants. I know it's terrible. Uh, Wild Turkey one hundred and one. I mean, it's just like it should be everywhere. It should should be everywhere. I standard. mean, there's a lot of restaurants that would get more of my business if they carried <laughs> Wild Turkey one hundred and one. Oh, oh yes. well, what are you gonna do? Um, so this is episode number 20. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> You're real excited about that, huh? <laughs> hey, man. Number so we almost this, is, have, this is a big deal. <laughs> we have almost as many episodes as listeners. Mm. Um, I don't know if those numbers are correct. I don't know if those numbers are like, I don't iTunes know. doesn't oh. give me anything and, yeah. you know, like the download numbers at the... At the um, Podbeam. Yeah, aren't necessarily... Exact, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we don't really know how many of y'all are out there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully there's a lot more than I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, we usually save this to the end, but we yeah. may as well put it at the beginning because maybe you don't <coughs> listen that long. Yeah. Um, share, like, share, <laughs> share. Share is the big one. Share. Put it in front of more people because, you know, this is good, right? I think, I think so. I think tonight's going to be a really good one. I'm looking forward to our conversation tonight. Yeah. This wasn't exactly something special to, to do for episode 20, but um, the news wasn't really that interesting. I mean... There's just not a lot going on. Everything's yeah. kind of sucked down right now with um, the hurricane that's been out there for like a month. Hey, we could spend some time talking about price gouging. Yeah, hey, you <laughs> that, know that could that could go on the list. Actually, right? add that to the list because <laughs> yeah. we can we can open up talking about price gouging if you want to because that's one that always goes. It's always a big topic when you have a storm like this. Yeah, and it's one that I just find so many people are poorly educated on. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, I think that we've addressed it before, but it may have been in one of those old way that back when episodes. Post. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Anyway, that only a very few people have had the pleasure of listening to. <laughs> um, but what we decided to do, I mean, we could talk about Brexit, too. Like, that's going on. There is that going um, on. Oh. But I don't know that that many Americans are interested. And really, our take is, see, what happens is it's only the illusion of democracy. And then when you pick the thing that they don't expect or want you to pick, then they just make it so untenable that you are forced to pick the other thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. we, we've talked about that before, and, and we'll probably go back to that in a month or so when it's closer to the actual deadline. Yeah. We'll see where they are. Yeah, um, we could talk about the the Afghan withdrawal that's not a withdrawal at all. It's just a big drawdown. I was fixing to say I heard some stuff on that yesterday that it's looking more and more like they're going to drastically reduce the number of troops, but it's not going to be a full withdrawal. Yeah, well, drastically reduce means that they're taking about 5,000 troops out and leaving about 9,000. Yeah. So. The thing I got a kick out of the other night that I heard was that they were calling them NATO troops. And which, I guess technically they are because NATO makes up like a few, other than the U.S., mm -hmm. like a few thousand of these troops. Like, so they, and they really briefly like ran through the numbers. And I don't remember what they were exactly. Yeah. But I want to say that NATO, other countries other than the U.S. had about 3,000 of those troops. And we had the other, I think, 15 or something <laughs> yeah. like it was it was uh, well, it, not enough to call it a nato force <laughs> yeah i do find it interesting how um they they just change the language over and over i was listening to uh, some coverage of the hong kong protest the other day yeah. and every time they said the hong kong protest they they um preceded it with leaderless so yeah. every time they talked about it it was the leaderless Hong Kong protest movement. Yeah. The leaderless Hong Kong protest movement. They really wanted you to believe that there's nobody <laughs> that pushing nobody that Nobody is, yeah. yeah. That it, it's totally organic. No one's and I'm sure that a lot of it is. But, uh, you know, leaderless isn't accurate. No. Uh, I mean, there's definitely, I mean, they definitely have some spokes holes. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some people speak on behalf of the group, mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. 
at the least. Yeah, well, and it's it's weird that Hong Kong keeps arresting leaders of the protest movement if it's a leaderless movement. But, <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I would say you can't have it both ways, but clearly you can. Apparently you can. Yeah. Maybe. Um, so I, I guess, sure, Let's uh, the, the way we were going to do this is that we were going to address um, some of the crazy things that libertarians say. Yeah. And why they say so. Hopefully. And why we're right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Exactly. I don't know. Um, We'll see how much me and you. We'll, there, we'll there, see how uh, much two libertarians actually agree on. We're gonna. This is going to be yeah. one of those experiments where you have two people that believe the same thing and can't agree on any of it. So yeah. So uh, all right. Well, let's start with price gouging. Go ahead and give us a, a little. Yeah. So I mean, the big thing with price gouging is so when you have these storms, you're going to have people resources become thin really quick. So it doesn't matter how much water or gas or anything these places have, they start running out of it pretty quick when everybody knows a storm's coming. Because there's a big rush for it. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what happens. And what what should what ends what should happen is when more people when there becomes more demand for these items, the prices should go up. Mm-hmm. Because the more the more people need it the more people that are coming for it, the more there's a need for it, the more we need, the price needs to go up. But the law won't let that happen, or the government, the yeah. government won't let that happen. They, there's all these price gouging laws that prevent that. Mm-hmm. So what happens then is, so instead of a price of, the, let's just take water, because that's always the big one. Yeah. It's always the one that stinks about. So instead of it being $3 for a 24-pack, or well, it, 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 it stays at three dollars. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's three dollars now. It stays three dollars because there's the price isn't allowed to go up. So everybody hoards it. You end up with a few people that end up with most of the resource, and then there's none left out there for it to be gotten. Yeah. Instead of people going in there and getting two or three cases that they need that they to get absolutely the, need, yeah, that get through the storm, they end up filling three shopping carts full of cases of water. And then somebody doesn't get any water at all. Exactly. Um, Which this always amazes me. People turn in the fish during a hurricane, by the way. Yeah. Like these same, I, I work water. in retail. Like, so these same people that are coming in buying cases and cases of Cokes, like every week, like I see them, I know them. Mm-hmm. Man, a hurricane comes, they got to have that water then. That's when it's all yeah. of a sudden they, they, they turn in the fish, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Well, and the, <laughs> the funny thing, or the, maybe the ironic thing about that is that What's happening during a hurricane is that the storm is dumping a ton, ton of, of water, water on you. Yeah. Yeah. And what they should be going out and getting is whiskey. Oh, yeah, exactly. Obviously. Well, I, I will say this, though. At least in the areas I work in, beer is a big part of hurricane season. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I probably stock up on more beer before a storm than I do. And I'm talking about at the store I run. Yeah. yeah, I probably stock up on more beer than I do water because I know I'll sell the beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the the anti-price gouging laws. See, to me, price gouging is a, is a misnomer a lot like mm. um, predatory loan. Okay. Right? Like, price gouging... It, it's not price gouging. It's charging what the market demands. What the market demands. Yes. Yeah. What, uh, you're now charging a market price for your your item well, for the commodity. And what? And it the preventing people from raising their prices does a lot of things besides the fact that the it it doesn't distribute the good in an equitable way. Yeah. Um, because people get way more than they need because there's and. It probably generates a black market, too, because then you can't get it at the store anywhere because the stores aren't allowed to raise their prices. But some guy on the street sure can. Yeah. Well, he can until he gets stopped. I mean, I've I've heard of a lot of scenarios, not locally, but in other areas, particularly with generators. I think this happens a lot where some some guy buys a truckload of generators where he's from drives them to the area Mm -hmm. and sells them for whatever the market will allow and then ends up getting arrested because he because that's price gouging i mean even whether it's you on the side of the street or it's you and mm-hmm. as a business owner either way the gouging laws still apply yeah um and so somebody that was theoretically doing a good thing bringing a resource that wasn't here before into an area yeah. ends up being punished mm-hmm. for and and while you may not agree with the fact that he's selling them at double or triple the price the fact is people that needed those got them and yeah. were willing to pay it. Yeah. Because if they weren't willing to pay it, he'd bring the price down to where they were. All these transactions are voluntary. Exactly. And some store raising their price to $8 a, um, 
a case of water. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to sell it for eight dollars a case of water, and and let. Unless if the guy can. next door Unless is they selling can. it for seven. Exactly. If the guy next door is selling it for seven, then people are going to go there. So there's still the um, the competition that keeps prices as low as they can possibly be yep. for people. Um, and the other thing that it does, though, is especially in the aftermath of these hurricanes, like we're talking about what happens beforehand. The mostly, lead up, yeah. Um, where people are going out and, and stocking up on these things that they don't usually buy. Yeah. Um, and and through the price being left low, instead of it being distributed in a in a fairly equitable way among people, where people just go and get what they need and leave some for the next person to go spend three times what they would normally spend to get it. Yeah. Um, but at least they have it. At least they were able to get it. Then in the <laughs> aftermath of the storms, um, yeah, man, I, you got TB or something. Like you got to do something about. <laughs> Cough. I don't know what to tell you. You man. may have had it for years. I, I I think I spend enough time around you. The only time I notice it is during the podcast. But. Well, you know what? You know what part of it is? Is I cough more when I'm talking a lot. And yeah. I've actually noticed that. Like mm-hmm. if, when I'm like working by myself, I don't yeah. cough at all. But when I'm running my mouth, it seems to happen. Maybe you do, but you don't realize it because you don't have to stop well, your talking. I've, no, I've, I've started paying attention though. Yeah. Since it's, since now that it's been brought to my attention, I've started paying attention, and I just like because I'll notice I'll be like, man, I ain't coughed all day, and then I'll be like, well, I've been working by myself all day, mm-hmm. and as soon as I get in a situation where I'm having to talk a lot, it starts. We should get you some throat lozenges or something. Maybe, for the podcast. man. <laughs> well, okay. So in the aftermath of the storm, though, the the fact that they can't charge a higher price means that the needed goods don't get shipped into the area, too. Yep. Because if you can charge $8 for a case of water in Florida right now, and you're yeah. shipping from Kentucky, yeah. then you're probably going to go ahead and load that truck up and send as many as you can to Florida where you can get $8 a case yeah. instead of sending them to uh, Alabama where you can only get $3 a case. Well, and the other thing that happens here that's that's exactly what you're referring to is is not only will – because the companies are always going to do what they can to send that product in because they know they're helping and blah, blah, blah. I've, I've seen enough to know that. But what else happens when, when you don't have gouging laws in effect is that people who don't have to bring it in will start bringing it in. So like the guy that lives in Alabama mm-hmm. that can go to the store and buy as much $3 water as he wants will load up his truck and take it to Florida where he knows he can sell it for 10 or $15, whatever the mm-hmm. price is. He will he will make that effort to take it there when in a in a regular situation he wouldn't, I or he would only do it, or he would only do it at a charity, mm-hmm. in a, and not everybody's going to do that. But when there's a price incentive to do it, more people will partake in that activity. Yeah, well, and I I suspect that the. Um the supply would still go up more with price gouging available, even if you take out that private person. Those companies yeah. aren't sending anything extra, I suspect, down there. Uh, I, I mean, maybe some, but certainly not as much as they would as they got three times the revenue. I can tell you, like, the com- some of the companies I work with, with Pepsi, particularly Pepsi and Coke, mm-hmm. like, when, whenever there's a storm in Florida, we may go two weeks a month without getting water here mm-hmm. because they divert all everything they've got to wherever the storm's at. Hmm. So, and like I say, that's just my experience with it, but I've, I've definitely experienced that. You got to stop this, man. You're, you're breaking up my point. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, even if there's not a profit motive, you will always have people who are acting charitably. Yeah. And no, there in those companies, there's still a profit motive. There always then, is. Well, then they good, can make the claim that they're, yeah, exactly. There's, um, I mean, you're always going to have that too. Yeah. But like I said, it's just. Just the reality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have some big companies that send uh, extra down there regardless. Yeah. Um, But you have smaller companies that aren't. Yeah. Well, Um, the smaller companies would be the ones you'd be looking at. That would be looking more at that profit incentive Mm -hmm. that that can't afford to do the things that your Coke and Pepsi and these companies can. So back to my original point, then you have whatever. I don't know. Nestle's probably a big enough company that they still send stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Some smaller water company. Um, they're not sending it down there because <clears throat> if they can only get the same $3 in Florida that they can get in Alabama and they're sending it from the middle of the country, well, now their shipping costs down to Florida also are much higher. Yeah, because um, that's the other thing you run into is not just it's 
once what these areas are impacted by the storms, they're a lot more difficult to access. Um, and shipping costs go up due to that because you've got truckers. Because the other thing you run into is nobody wants to make runs down there as far as truckers are concerned because mm-hmm. there's nothing there. There's nowhere yeah. to stay. There's nowhere to eat. There's no, I mean, it's, I mean, because I've went and helped in these areas a few times. And yeah. that's that's really the tough part about going and helping in those areas is you're in the same boat there and there's no resources yeah. there we run into that problem with some of our contractors too yeah um, when they go into these places after major storms yeah. um and to help with that down there and they don't like a lot of them just have uh mobile homes yeah because the only place they can really stay is a campground yeah because there's no hotel rooms there's no yeah yeah i mean that's the only way they can do it um but so just take it as from Like if it was just you, and again, the same thing. If you're making decisions for a company and PR is not a part of it, that can generate you revenue in other ways, et cetera. And you're looking at, um, I can make the same price in Florida that I can make in Alabama, but the shipping cost is more to Florida. Then why would I ship to Florida? Now, if I'm making three times as much (coughs) in Florida as I am in Alabama, then I'm less concerned about those shipping costs. Yeah. And I'm going to send as much as I can down to Florida. Absolutely. Um, and so the prices, all they do is they're a representation of the, the desire well, as repre- compared to the supply. Yeah, they're a representation of the demand. Mm-hmm. The uh, How much demand there is for a product will dictate what that price should be. Right. And the market is fully capable of doing that mm-hmm. without the government stepping in and and mediating that but what happens is and this is always the argument when you talk with people about this subject in particular is the emotional part takes hold and that's the reason that these laws exist the way they do and that people are so passionate about enforcing them because on top of them these laws being on the books people call about them you can ask your brother about Mm -hmm. when um he was working for the da when I guess, I forget what storm it was that was threatening to come through, but he said he spent yeah, days. It might have been Ivan. It wasn't Ivan. It was no. after Ivan. It may okay. have been the I forget Katrina. May have been Katrina because I want to say it was one that didn't actually hit here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, he said all day. Everybody that called in was, I want to report some gouging. It's yeah. gouging, gouging. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, but it's an emotional response, mm-hmm. you know. Well, here's another thing, too, and I don't want to get too far off topic on that, but, like, take some personal responsibility. If you live here along the coast, you know that a hurricane's a possibility. Yeah. You've always known it. They've come year after year after year. Exactly. You know what I need to go out and buy immediately if I hear that a a storm is coming up Mobile Bay? Yeah. Nothing. I got everything (laughs) that I need here already. Well, I do the same thing, and I do it at the beginning of the season before Mm -hmm. it it, this all even starts up around May or so. I buy a bunch of water, a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff to put in the box, and it all just goes to the side. Yeah, um, and that's the way to do it. And if you live down here, that's something that everybody should do. Yeah, but people don't, and and even if they do, they still panic yeah. because once it gets, all it takes is for it to get into the Gulf. Once it's mm-hmm. in the Gulf, you can hang up finding anything. Yeah. I, I actually mean, often think that the news plays up the severity of these things just periodically, to generate periodically more they do. retail sales. I've, I've <laughs> seen that happen um, with storms. And it's, it's, it's not only to gen up more retail sales, but it's, it gives them something to report on. And, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it gives them some relevancy because guess what? More people are watching the news when they think a storm's fixing a hit because they mm-hmm. want to know where it is, when it is, the whole shebang. But why would the libertarian be opposed to price gouging laws? The answer is really simple. Believe in the free market. Yeah. Um, and the price controls is a socialist concept. Yeah. It is a way of the government controlling what goes on. And it what it leads to is it leads to, uh, like, scarcity is just a part of the market. Yeah. What it leads to is shortages. Yep. And so that's the, the problem with it. People should be able to, pr- uh, to price their products at whatever they can sell them for. Yep. And all those purchases... There's still a voluntary exchange. Yeah. Somebody well, decided that that case of water was worth like fifty dollars or worth whatever more than is. the eight dollars that they paid for it, or yeah. ten dollars, or twenty dollars, or whatever that they paid for it. And the store owner certainly decided that the twenty dollars was worth more than the 
the case of water. Exactly. Um, everybody went in there, and like the idea that you're being taken advantage of in a in a situation like that, I, I think is just like I understand where that idea would come from. Yeah. But that person is charging what they can, <coughs> and you're paying what you what think is reasonable. Is fair. Yeah. Yeah. Or you wouldn't pay it. Yeah. Exactly. Because if the one place is charging fifty and the other is charging twenty five. 25 places is going to run out first. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, know. that's the other thing, right? Like, yeah. okay, you can go into the store that's charging $50 for their case of water and yeah. complain about them charging $50 for their case of water. Yeah. And then and say, well, the water. guy down the street is only charging 25 for his. Yeah. And the store owner says, well, why don't you go buy from him? Well, he's yeah. out. Exactly. Exactly. So, and the, the other thing that kind of we can wrap this one up on mm-hmm. is that the – Allowing the market to do what it's supposed to do gets the most of that resource out to the most people. Um, and because th- that's what you want anyway, it, it brings you to the end that you're looking for, as, that any reasonable per- person would be mm-hmm. looking for, is to get the most of this resource to the most people the yeah. most efficiently. Yeah. Um, well, and so that leads us to what would be the argument to the left and the argument to the right on this? Yeah. The argument to the left on this is to say, this is. Letting the market do its job results in the most equitable distribution of the resource. Yeah. The most people get the resource. Exactly. And and, and closest to what they need. And, it, and on the right, yeah. the argument is for the free market. Yeah. That the government price fixing um, is, is a socialist system and the government has no right to tell a store what they can and can't charge for a product. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, so, okay, what, did you wanna, what do you want to tackle next? <laughs> I don't know, man. Take a look at your list. Okay, well, we had a, we had a good discussion on borders. Okay. Recently, so. Um, and you'll find that, uh, that Liberty Larry and I, uh, we have some disagreements on this stuff because... Uh, because um, we're libertarians and we can't agree on anything. Well, no, I would say <laughs> it's because I'm more principled. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with you on that. Um, and in my heart, I'm an ANCAP, mm-hmm. but I'm just. I find myself be, to be more pragmatic than that than yeah. you. And you, you do a much better job of even if you of sticking to the principles, yeah. regardless. Yeah. The which is philosophical important. and intellectual consistency is really important to me. Yeah. Um, and I think overall it's important to libertarians. That's part of the reason I think of all the parties I like them the best is yeah. because there's there's a true effort to stay consistent. Mm-hmm. Where and you don't have that at all in the uh, other two big parties. Like there is yeah. no consistency in those whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And even just to go back, uh, and it's a it's a good illustration. Just to go back to the price gouging, um, the. I, like I understand the pragmatic need to keep prices low so people don't feel like they're being taken advantage of and they're the worst of circumstances. Yeah. But my experience would suggest that government interference in these kind of things creates more problems than it solves. It does. Particularly in the gouging reference. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's no question it creates more. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't even really argue that it doesn't. Oh, I'm sure we could find somebody. <laughs> yeah, but but what we're, the road you go down is is you you want to you end up creating more laws and more mm-hmm. laws and more laws because that's because anybody that's going to yeah. argue for the price controls, mm-hmm. their their answer to everything will be more law and more regulation. Yeah. Well, and so this is something that'll come up on every single one of these, and this is something that you, that I think that people should consider when they think about whether there should be a law about it or not. Yeah, is that what is required to enforce that law? Yeah. So so the guy with the generators, yeah, he gets his truck full of generators and he goes down there and he's charging three times the price normal price for a generator and people are buying them from him and the police catch him and they arrest him yeah well now his generators are off the market exactly exactly and that happens i mean that's who who won in that scenario <laughs> yeah you uh know. well the state did because they get to at least <laughs> charge some kind of fines or something yeah you know? well yeah because the, the state ends up making money and probably confiscating his generators yeah and then turn it around and sell them, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or using them to stock whatever their yeah. um, uh, their shelter or something. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, okay, so open borders. Now, I do have pragmatic issues with open borders in this country at this time. Like, yeah. uh, But my what I would say is that all of those problems are caused by government to begin with. I'll grant now, you that 100%. Yeah. Uh, now, the argument for open borders is that it is a freedom of movement argument. Okay. Um, that people should be able to go wherever it is that they want to go. I mean, excluding private property. Like, yeah. I, I still believe in trespassing. Right? Okay. Private property is private property. Right? <laughs> so, so you don't get open borders in your house? No, no, no. I'll, I'll, well, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> All um, right. <laughs> but uh, the so the public bridge yeah. across the Rio Grande from Mexico to the U.S., there's no reason that anybody shouldn't be able to cross over that bridge. You're not violating anybody's private property. Yeah. Right. So anybody should be able to go from one place to the other. Yeah. And then, you know, on the economic side, this is a free market argument. Yeah. Like people should be able to go where the labor is required. Yeah. Right. I think a big part of the fear that comes along with this is that you end up, you will end up with so many people coming in and there will be nowhere for them to go. So the next thing you know, your streets are littered with with people from another country that don't know the language, that that are just all of a sudden here. And then they start using all the resources. That, so public school, um, all of these things, they start using that. And that's a problem. Well, public school is a government institution. Yeah. Right? Well, so... Um, but and, and this when is, you say litter the streets, you mean like homeless all over the place and things like that? Potentially. Well, uh, the the record would show that that's not a concern well, that really exists because there were, I don't remember, it was like 100,000 people that moved into California in the last year yeah. um, from uh, south of the border. Yeah. And those are not the people that are homeless in, yeah. in California. Yeah. All those people found housing. Yeah. Uh, well, at least a great majority of them. Okay. Um, the people that are homeless are not a whole bunch of immigrants that couldn't find a place to live. The yeah. immigrants found places to live. Yeah. People that are on the streets are there for some other reason. <coughs> yeah. So um, that's not a concern. I remember a friend of mine uh, when I lived in Atlanta. Um, he lived in a neighborhood where there were a lot of uh, a lot of Hispanics, and um, I remember him. Uh, outside, yelling at at a minority group. There's this black guy pushing up a, a, a cart. shopping cart, yeah. you know, up the street, and he's like yelling at him to get out of the neighborhood or whatever. And and this was at a party we'd been drinking a lot. Anyway, <laughs> alcohol um, was involved. <laughs> yeah. Um, although I wouldn't put it past him to do that on if he was <laughs> sober. sober too. Yeah. But uh, anyway, like somebody behind him was like, "Oh man, well you must have a real problem with all the Mexicans that live around here." He's like, "No, absolutely not." Those people are here because it's close to the mass transit. MARTA is what it is yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. Those people live here because it's close to MARTA and they can get anywhere in the city to work. They're here to work. <laughs> I don't have any problem with them. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and that's generally the truth. These people are coming here because, for the most well, part, it is interesting. people are coming here to work. And yeah. you remember here in Alabama when they really crack down on illegal That's where I was people fixing to go. In. Go yeah. ahead. Tell yeah. the story. Then. No, well, I won't tell the story, but I'll just say it is funny that they always seem to raid the work facilities whenever it comes time to round people up. It's, it's funny that that's, that's where they look for them at because that, they know that's where they are. <laughs> well, we, so. had, we had crops rotten in the fields. Yeah, yeah. Here in because, Alabama because they cracked down. Because, and the truth is, like, you can say what you want to – but most people in this country don't want to do that work. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's, and it's not even so much that they don't want to. They can't. I mean, they'll spend a day or two out there. Yeah. And it's, it ain't happening. And it's miserable, hot, it's, and hard work. Yep. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, and it is. And I mean, if, and it doesn't pay well because it doesn't take any particular skill. There's no skill to it. It's yeah. just can you stand out in the field for ten hours a day and mm-hmm. and do this and do this like backbreaking labor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. So. Now, and so that's that's the thing. Like, uh, and another problem with it is that, so you're going to leave it in the hands of the government to decide how many people can come in, who they're going to be, what they're going to do when they get here. Uh, this is central planning. All right. So here would be my question. Right? All right. Like you're in favor of some immigration controls. Yeah. Um. 
But you're you're opposed to the government interfering in in a free market, right? I am absolutely. How is this different? Uh, my my idea ideal situation of this would be where you you control the border, so you control the people coming in, but you let the people who are already here be as they are. So you wouldn't be rounding people up and things of that nature. Well, how strictly do you enforce that? Like, and how do yeah. you enforce that? Well, there's... I mean, if okay, so if the border patrol sees somebody slipping under the fence, yeah, and they can't reach them before they get into the United States, and now yeah. by your plan, they're free to roam the United States as they please, well, right? I... Do you shoot them to prevent that? <laughs> no. Well, I, I would never advocate for that. Obviously. Okay. Well, then it's like not having any kind of border control at all, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think you still have the ability to round them, like to to people who are clearly just. Mm-hmm. Coming through like that, I still think you round them up and take them back. Um, I don't, see, I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, I wouldn't advocate for deadly force doing it. Yeah. I mean, I would. I would be okay with making people sign the guest book. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, as they came in, like we yeah. had for centuries. Yeah. In this country, you know, you have those those huge books that you can still look through at Ellis Island that have all the the immigrants signing yeah. their names as they came in and, and so forth. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I do have some pragmatic issues with with open borders, yeah. but the principal position is that there shouldn't be central government planning yeah. of who enters and leaves the country. Yeah. Um, that it works just as well as central government planning of any other part of the economy. Well, they don't know where labor is needed <coughs> or how much, yeah. and they're going to overshoot or undershoot. And yeah. if you just let the market do its job, it yeah. will. People will come in here to work, and if they can't find work, they'll go back home. Yeah. And in a, in an ideal libertarian society, I wouldn't so much have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is we're way too far down the socialist rung. For that to seem like it would work. Well, that's a socialist program. What you're advocating is a socialist program. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I don't... I, so I, what you're saying is, yeah. well, you know, we, we've crossed this line, so we may as well just lean into it. Is well, that... I, would, I mean, I would advocate for tearing that... <laughs> I would advocate for borders to be lower on the list of things that need to happen mm-hmm. as far as where I'm going to put my focus yeah. As far as things like that go. And, you know, what we've always said about this is that, that walls can keep people in, too. Yeah, that's something I've always been a Because it's true. I mean, yeah. that, that can, it um, can work both ways. Well, uh, so here, I mean, there's so many issues of, of, about this. Uh, and I was talking about, you know, somebody coming through my backyard. Yeah. Well, that's something that happens. But it's yeah. not, I mean, it can happen. It, it yeah. is... The enforcement requirements. So we're going to yeah. keep coming back to enforcement requirements. Yeah. The enforcement requirements, because of the border thing, is that there's essentially 100 miles from every border of the U.S., from and including from the ocean, from the Gulf, etc. Oh, yeah. Is essentially a constitution-free zone where the yeah. law that, enforcement can stop anybody and ask for their papers. Now that I have a problem with. And the other thing is that... If there is actually, I don't even know that you really need a reason to believe, but I mean, yeah. but uh, a law a law enforcement officer could have some suspicion, some you know nebulous suspicion that there is an illegal immigrant in my backyard, yeah. and can come through my fence without my permission. And if my dog looks at them wrong, they can shoot my dog. Find nobody here and leave, and that's perfectly legal. Yeah, nothing you can do about it. So how many how many U.S. citizens' rights are you willing to to throw out the door in order to make sure that these people's rights they can't? My answer to that's zero. I mean, I think all of that is BS. I have no, I, I can't condone any of that, and that's the reason. So you're I, in a catch twenty two then, because yeah. you're you're advocating a policy that then becomes almost unenforceable. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, my my perfect situation would be enforcement at the border, and then then what? Like I say, uh, the whole idea that you can have people coming in your yard or or stopping trucks because that's another big thing they do is they stop these trucks and unload them and make them go through all these jump hoops and stuff to because they, they with legitimate reason. I mean, they smuggle people in through trucks. That's true. Um, but at the same time, you know. Mm-hmm. That's you. You are violating a lot of people's rights by doing that. Like, yeah, I there's. Have, I have a problem with. There's that. very few threats. What do you think are the real fears of immigrants? 
Well, I mean, I the big thing would be crime. I would. Well, um, I mean, people and to me, as far as that in and of it's concerned, because that's that's what people worry about. Like mm-hmm. they were going to put a center or a camp over here. Was it about a year ago or something? I don't know. They were, but um, man, you want to talk about people freaking out because it was supposed to go in Summerdale. Mm-hmm. People were flipping out over it. Yeah. Um, and that was that was a big thing that that this was, was a the, migrant camp or yeah okay. yeah. Um, I, I I have to look up and find all the details, but I remember when it was going on because Mr. Byrne stepped in and kind of ended up putting a squash on it. But um, yeah, they were um fixing to put one over there. And the big thing that um, people were... You can always count on Mr. Byrne to worry about our security (laughs) over our liberty. (laughs) Yes, you can. Uh Um, But yeah, a big thing that people were worried about was the crime, which I think Mm -hmm. is a a false deal. Like, I mean, I don't... I don't... These people aren't coming in here to to do a bunch of crime. And if they do, and if they do, Mm -hmm. there's plenty of law enforcement to deal with that. Like, I mean, there's plenty of laws already (laughs) on the books to deal with that. Most of the crime... um, this might be a good transition, actually. Most of the crime related to border crossings is about the drug war. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, and there's another point, because I, I don't think we've explored this as much as we can. Well, yeah. we could probably spend a whole episode on immigration at some point. I, w- I would like to just throw this out there real quick as we mm-hmm. transition here is... Like so, I have a lot of Mexicans that shop at my store. It just happens to be where the store is located. Mm-hmm. Those are the most friendly and easiest people to deal with. Half of them don't speak the language anyway. Yeah, but they they don't shoplift. They're respectful. Mm-hmm. I mean, it. I, it's, I'm just telling you, that's just my personal experience. Yeah, but I just it it it's just kind of the way it is, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I I have a. I have an issue with the enforcement side of it and the idea of it, that a government can centrally plan the demographics yeah. any better than they can centrally plan anything else, which yeah. <laughs> I, I think has been essentially proven at this point yeah. that they can't, they're not capable of doing it. Yeah. Um, which so, is the whole reason that socialism doesn't work. You can't mm-hmm. plan for everything that an economy needs. Yeah. You just you can't. I mean And so we're talking about the free movement of labor. Yeah. I mean, are you're you're on board with free trade, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Why doesn't that include labor? Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I will absolutely concede that you hold the you hold the principled ground on this one. Um, you have I'm on you, the high you, ground. you have the moral high ground here. I will grant you that through and through. Well, um, back to the the drug war thing. Uh, so here's another one of those crazy things that libertarians say. Yeah, all drugs should be legal. Yeah, and and this is one that. You won't get much pushback from me on. Yeah. Um, hey, you know, I will say these this, drugs though. are dangerous. So I just talked about how Some friendly and nice all the Mexican people that shop in my store are. Because they're all the, high? No. You know who the people I have the problem with? <laughs> Who's it's that? The meth heads. Yeah. The meth is a huge problem where I'm at. And I can't really, like I say, I, that it's not a problem in the Mexican community because mm. those people are just as, and they may all be high. They all, may all be stoned <laughs> out of their mind. In fact, quite a few of them without question are. Yeah. But, you know. those you smell it when they get up to the oh, register. Dude, like, oh my God. There are people, <laughs> and not specifically people of that nationality, but there are people that when they walk through that door, mm. I can be on the other side of the store and be like, I smell it. I yeah. don't know where it is, but I smell it. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, so maybe a uh, first question is why shouldn't all drugs be legal? Yeah. Well, um the the arguments that I always hear are stuff that are related to the the getting of the drugs so like a lot of people will be like well it's it's there's so much violence around drugs and that type of thing well that's a silly argument the problem with that argument is (laughs) is that the reason the violence is around the drugs is because they're illegal Mm -hmm. if they were legal none of that would be around it's the same thing with the mafia back in Eh, that's true and not true i mean there's plenty of uh of um, property theft you deal with more property theft well that may be true too but what i was thinking of there's plenty of times that drugstores are held up well yeah i'm broken into and things of that nature i mean they're Um, 
sort of legal, you know, yeah. the the drugs they're accepted, yeah, essentially. Um, well, I mean, they're you'll, you'll regulated have, heavily, or there wouldn't be. We again, had a but, we had a break in at one of our stores less than a month ago, and they all they broke in and came after was the cigarettes. So you're always going to have that with any market. Anytime you have a substance, you're gonna there's going to be people yeah. that are after it that don't have the money for it that are in need of it or want it or mm-hmm. whatever. Right. So you're going to have that. Yeah. Um, well, what it comes down to on the libertarian side, why should all why should all drugs be legal, regardless of their dangers, um, is that it's essentially your right to your own body. Yeah. Right. Like. I ha- I should have the right. Who has the moral right to what I put into my own body? Yeah. It's not the state. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, or it shouldn't cer- be. certainly anyway, shouldn't be. Right? Yeah, I mean. Um, and it, so it's me. I get to choose for myself. And I, yeah. I'm, I could be wrong on this. I, I'm pretty sure it was Lysander Spooner who yeah. said uh, – no man um, wishes. Oh gosh! Now, right. now you got to get forgot. the quote right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, let's see. I, you know what? I can look it up because it's easier that way, and then I won't get it wrong. Yeah. Um, it's a shame because I use this quote all the time. Now here I am on the spot, and I can't come up with it. <laughs> uh, um, but nobody wishes to be protected either in his person or property against himself. Yep. Right. Like if I want to destroy my own life, it's my life to destroy. Absolutely. And. Uh, and there shouldn't be any government involvement in that. So the problem with, like, okay, so some drugs are certainly more dangerous than others. Absolutely. Um, and, like, my old argument used to be, before I, I really kind of fell into the libertarian philosophy, yeah. my old argument used to be, like, heroin should be legal, crack should be legal, like, all these really dangerous drugs should be legal because they're essentially self-limiting drugs. Yeah. Like, That's if you use not... it for long enough, <coughs> you die. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's just – so, you know, why spend all this time trying to enforce it? Because, you know, the people that the, you're worried about, they're going to get themselves out of the system at some point anyway. Yeah. And there's not a lot of violent heroin addicts as it is anyway. <laughs> that is true. Well, I mean, in the attempt to acquire it. Yes, there is. But but once the drug has been acquired <laughs> – Yeah, then they just kind of sit back. Exactly. Um but the the argument at this point is that any any line you draw is necessarily arbitrary. Yeah. Uh, between one drug and the next. Yeah. Um, there's a like okay, so I'm I was a huge fan of Twin Peaks. All right. Um, back in the day, in the original movie Fire Walk with Me, uh, there's a scene where um there these two FBI agents uh, played by um, Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Chris Chris Isaac. The you musician is how I mostly know him. I, I think it's Chris Isaac. Anyway, um, they're asking a, the, uh, I guess uh, she may be the owner. I can't remember. Anyway, it's cafe staff yeah. about another person that worked at the cafe that had died yeah, or disappeared. And um, something comes up about drugs. And so they're asking her if she does, if she uses drugs. And, and she's like, I don't use drugs. And she's sitting there with her coffee and her cigarette, right? Yeah. And so Kiefer Sutherland's character says, caffeine's a drug. Nicotine's a drug. <laughs> and she, yeah. she, so she turns to, we're going to go with Chris, yeah. Isaac, and says, uh, who's the toe hit first? <laughs> <laughs> who's the toe hit? But then she turns back to Kiefer Sutherland and she says, those drugs are legal. <laughs> Which makes them not drugs, obviously, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, but the the point is well made. Like, yeah, yeah those are drugs too. Yep. What's the difference between a legal and illegal drug? Exactly. How much you're going to go to jail for if you get caught with it? <laughs> yeah. And it's it's essentially arbitrary what's legal and what's not. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, cigarettes, nicotine. Well, not nicotine yeah. specifically, but cigarettes kill way more people than. Almost yeah. anything on the class one drug list. Oh, yeah, without question. Yeah. So why is it that that one is is okay, but these aren't? I, you know, we we're we'll yeah. take up the DUI thing some other time, I think, because we're yeah. you know we're running. We're here. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, alcohol is a very dangerous drug. Clearly, if yep. used wrong, or, yeah. or you know, if you do too many other things on it, it clearly impairs you in a, in a very significant way, yeah. um, which can be dangerous to others. That one's legal. Yeah. It was illegal for a little while. That didn't, that, that didn't go well. That didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, which goes back to the violence that surrounds something when you make it illegal. That was the yeah. point I was going to make earlier. I mean, the mm. mafia was basically started. I mean, Al Capone, you know, made his living off of the fact that alcohol was illegal. Yeah, and they had the highest murder rates in the history of this country, I think, during the time yeah. uh, of Prohibition. And exactly. they dropped off precipitously yeah. once Prohibition was repealed. Exactly. And we can do the same. Th- what irritates me is is we have that history behind us. We can do the same thing now mm-hmm. if we just went and legalized the whole group. Yeah. Just just do it all. Yeah. It, it would fix so many problems and then you could focus more on on prevention. And like, treatment. So, and treatment. Well and, and when I say prevention, I mean what I'm actually getting at. It's actually helping some of these people that need the help. Because right now what happens if somebody needs the help, the best way the way they end up getting it is they get arrested and they end up in jail. Yeah. And guess what? They're not getting help in there. No. They're just no. getting they're just getting more messed up. And it's it's Did it's you just basketball a basketball diaries. I haven't. Oh, Leonardo DiCaprio. There's a like he ends up with a real serious heroin addiction. Finally gets caught, goes to jail. Yeah. And he says, uh, "It's easier to get heroin in jail than it was outside." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no joke. I mean, <laughs> and it's it's it doesn't work. I mean, there's it and and there are systems that work, and there are ways to to at least lessen the blow of some of this because here's what we know for sure don't work prohibition does not work yeah i mean it's been we've dealt with this in this country for how many years i mean it just it's and it's still there and it'll always be there no matter what is done yeah Um, and so many of your rights get violated through the the arm of the government enforcing Drug laws. Because they can be proactive about it. That's exactly where I was going. You end up with just like, I think we may have talked about it on this podcast, but proactive law enforcement. Yeah. Where you don't have that. If all the drugs are legal, there's a lot less reason to stop a car for Mm -hmm. suspicion of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or go knocking on doors or whatever. Yeah, or knocking in doors and Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Because that's where it is a lot is the doors are getting knocked in Yeah. for, for having a plant. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. I'll I'll see. There was a, um, I read a really good article in the book uh, by Will Grigg, No Quarter. No Quarter, yes. Um, And I'll, I'll, there's probably an online version. I'll I'll pull it back up in the book and see if I can find it online and post it uh, about a a couple that got SWAT raided (laughs) for, for weed. Yeah. And it was like a nothing thing. They were essentially peaceful people. Yep. I think the real crime was that they had offended somebody in the government. Ah, yeah. You know. Like, yep. And so all of th- that's another point that we may as well make right here is that all of these laws give uh, give government the opportunity to hold somebody, to punish somebody for things that aren't really related to that. Yeah. Like it gives them a, a way to attack a dissident. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, and that's not to go down the rabbit hole, mm-hmm. but the whole Eric Gardner thing is, I mean, the he Lucy, was, is the, that guy who yeah, was selling that's Lucy the guy cigarettes? That, that, yeah. The guy that was selling loose cigarettes on the street. He wouldn't have been selling those cigarettes if the tax wasn't through the roof on them. Yeah. And he died over that. Yeah. Like the, the government was enforcing a BS law and he died. Yeah. Well, he wasn't rolling his own cigarettes either. Like the tax yeah. was paid somewhere along the well, way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can only assume <laughs> I don't live in New York, so I don't know. But my understanding is, is people bring those cigarettes in from out of state yeah. where they're cheaper. Mm. Well, I think they're like eight to ten dollars a pack. In they are, yeah. And so you can go a few states over, and they actually have people that run them that just yeah. go and buy them over there and then smuggle them in. Yeah. And so, which brings up a whole other avenue for the for law enforcement to try to do because mm-hmm. what a big part of what they do is they try to catch people who have these carloads of cigarettes, yeah. smuggle them in. So I mean, it, well, hell, I mean, when we go to uh, Florida or Louisiana from here, yeah. buy a bunch of liquor. Yeah, because it's it's significantly, significantly cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, and so, but if we were if we were going over there and buying that liquor and bringing it back here and selling it, yeah, it would yeah. be illegal. It would be absolutely illegal. Yeah. So, just uh, whole the the nice. wonders of government. Yeah, um, and so essentially, like if you take government out of the mix of all of this stuff, most of it is not harmful. Yep. And therefore not worth I, like especially because I'm I want to 
kind of try and wrap it up here. Yeah, we need to yeah. we need to find um, a closing spot. And we need to leave, you know, a bunch of these so we can do one of so these. So we're again. gonna do more of these episodes because <laughs> yeah. we got a whole list of stuff we ain't touched. <laughs> Crazy things libertarians say. Yeah. Um but the whole uh thing about immigration. Yeah. If you take government out of the equation, yeah. there's no problem at all. Yeah. Which is like I was saying, which is where I'm at. I just believe that the immigration thing happens lower on the list. Yeah. It's not the first thing you do. It's one of the last. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I would say, like, I know that one of the things that people have a real concern about with immigration is, like you said, you know, all these these public purchases, essentially, that they get yeah. to take part in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, if you take government out of the mix, that it's goes a non-issue. Away. Yeah, that it, goes entirely. away. Entirely. You solve immigration in a weekend if you take government out of the yep. equation. But... Um, one thing I will say, and, and while you're, it could go both ways. Yeah. I mean, your point is a good one that, uh, they come in, they start absorbing all these resources. Um, and so, you know, we should abolish the welfare state before, before we start letting people in. Yeah. Um, the, the other side of that is, I would say equally possible, which is that if you start letting all these people in, yeah. that the people that are voting in this country We'll get rid of that welfare system just as well. It's well. There's no way to know. There's just, no way to know, but that's essentially what got Donald Trump elected. It is, but he was elected on enforcement, not on that's getting true. rid of the wel- welfare state. No, you're you're right, but it's that fear that yeah. that made people vote for Donald Trump in it's a lot true. of ways. Um, the and I think that if you have somebody who does open the borders then you have that same fear that pressure instead of saying well we can't get you to enforce the border then we want to abolish all of this welfare stuff yeah the problem is is there's so many people that are attached and dependent on that the 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 benefits that's true that they won't you i don't think i think we're at a saturation point where there's more people benefiting than there are paying in yeah. And so it's you end up with the whole problem with democracy in the first place mm-hmm. where you know the 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 many outweigh the few. Yeah. And can essentially vote away the rights vote of the few. away resources from the few. Yeah. yeah. Um so. well as you know I people should recognize that there was a time not that long ago yeah. where the US government represented between 1 and 2% of the gross domestic product. Yeah. And now it represents about 40% of the gross domestic wow. product. And you, you may also notice, by the way, yeah. going along with that, yeah. that during that time when the U.S. government represented 1% to 2% of the gross domestic product, yeah. there was no income tax. <laughs> and now you're paying 30 to 40% of your income, yeah. plus sales and all that. I mean, I calculated one time that I, I actually pay <coughs> about 50% of my income in some form of tax. One form or another, yeah. Because it's everywhere. I mean, there's no escape in it. So, you know, those of you out there that wonder about this, just think of how much difference in your life it would make and how much difference you could make in the life of other people, in the lives of other people. If you, if you had all of your, twice as much money as yeah. you have well, now. Just think of it this way. You had all of your income. If, yeah. I mean, because you can see it really easy if you print out your pay stub, mm-hmm. how much it is before and after. Yeah. And then and then build into that, you know, sales taxes and everything else that you have to pay. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, um, I, I guess now's as good a time as any to wrap it up. Uh, like Liberty Larry said, we've got a lot more of these. <laughs> we may do more of these episodes because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is fun. I mean, I think this is kind of the idea we had when we started this anyway. They should be special. They should be like few and we far will. between. We'll, but we'll I, be doing gonna, it again, though. Yeah. I'm going to mark off what we talked about, though, on this list, and we'll just keep adding to this list as we come up we can with keep new things. This as a running, plenty, yeah, we can keep this as plenty. a running list. So, yeah. you know, we got we got price gouging. We yeah. got borders. We're going to talk more about that anyway. I mean, that's something that borders we could, will continue to come up. I we mean, could devote an entire episode to yeah. to borders um, and drugs. So we only hit three of these. Yeah, and there's still plenty to go, and we'll yeah. come up with more as time goes along. Yeah, I actually wanted to talk about the weapons thing, but yeah, I had yeah. so much to say about it right now. I might have to jot down things that I've been thinking about over the last couple of days because I really thought that was you know it was on the top of my list, so it was something that I really <laughs> you, thought it was on your mind. We would talk about. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so I can, I can remember, you know, what I wanted to say about it whenever we get to it. Yeah.
down the road. Down the road. Make you some notes. So in the meantime, um, thanks for listening. Uh, follow us everywhere. Yeah. Um, share and us everywhere it? you can. Oh, hey, uh, and a call to arms of a sort here right. um, because we're not doing it. Um, we would like to put this podcast in front of um, some government people. And oh, so yes. we compiled a list of uh, people in, in government in Alabama um, that we could try and put it in front of. But here's what we would like. Like, if you can PM us on uh, Facebook with any Facebook pages that you know of, of staffers. Yeah. This is this is who I this, really like. This is get. our angle we're trying to run yeah. here. So, I mean, it doesn't do any good. I mean, it, it may do a little bit of good um, yeah. to copy uh, or to tag, you know, our representatives and senators and so forth. Yeah. But the people that work for them that actually, like, read all the stuff and so forth, those yeah. are far better people to reach. Yeah. And they're hard to track down. But... If you can track down Facebook pages for uh, staffers of your senators and representatives, yeah, please send them to us because we're yeah. going to start tagging those people yeah. and try and get this in front of some people that can actually like have some influence on policy. Absolutely. And uh, so, um, or you can email me, uh, Michael at the Liberty Mike, if you find their their information. Yeah. I suppose I'm probably going to have to get around to setting up a Twitter account for the liberty mic yeah i don't um, currently have a twitter personally so that's not a that's not a platform that i'm even yeah on. i have a twitter account but i don't use it because i used to use it for news stuff yeah and then my feed became so congested with stupid advertisement things that i just stopped going there entirely yeah you weren't um, getting what you were coming for and twitter is like twitter can be really really toxic yeah. uh they all are well yeah, that's true and which is why I you see that I log on to Facebook uh, essentially about, once a week to, once a week yep. <laughs> to <laughs> upload the podcast. Yep. Um, I've been I put up some articles though. I'm trying yeah. to to do that well. Stick oh. your head in a little more. What did I say? I was going to post an article from Will Grigg on what? Oh yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah. Let me let me make a note of that real quick too. Ah. Anyway, again, let's go ahead and close things. up. Um, so, uh, you know, thanks again for listening, follow us everywhere, share us if you can, um, give us information on the staffers for your various senators and representatives and we'll start irritating them. (laughs) Um, and, uh, you know, we'll try and get it right the next time. In the meantime, um, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.